We're gonna go with it. You ready, my baby boy? We got a huge golden retriever that is shedding, and he was here last eight weeks ago, so that doesn't sound terrible. But wait till you see all the work we have in store for us with this guy today. How's the sound, guys? <laughs> yep, this is Tex. And uh, let me get some stuff out of the way here. When you have a big dog in your grooming salon, your grooming salon suddenly seems very, very tiny. <laughs> All right. Hey, Gus, can I move your bed, honey? Come here, Gus. I see a Tex. No worries. Let's move Gus over here. Tex, we're going to go right to the tub. I have some issues to work out with his coat. He is, oh. he is uh, like kind of molting, <laughs> I guess you could say. Come here, Tex. But he has a hard time getting in the tub. He's 10 years old. Hi, baby boy. So I'm going to walk him right up the ramp and get him in the tub. You guys would probably like to see that. So let me move my camera for you. All right. So we're going to be getting him right in there. And then we're going to start bathing. Come here, my love. I know. How's my mic it's flopping around on me? Let me put it up here. Come on, sweet baby. Are you ready? Tex, we kind of got to get him a, a running start. This way, baby. Oh, God, you're such an angel. Thank you. Thank you. All right. See, and that's why when they're young, guys, we really need to work with them at a young age so we teach them to get in the tub on their own because if I had to pick him up and put him in there by myself, guys, I may not be able to do that, right? It's not that I'm that big of a weenie, but he's a big guy. All right, just put you on that for a second. I'm not liking the way my mic is playing. I don't know what's going on with the YouTube not letting me live stream and landscape mode which is what it should be all right guys you can see him right all right i can't get the comments up whatever i'm not gonna worry about it because it's only taken away okay there he is that's tex fix my mic he has a couple areas of concern today and we'll get a little up close and personal with that when I get him back up on the table. But what we're going to be doing today is the proper way to groom a golden retriever. Obviously, that is not at all through shaving. I'm going to mix my shampoo a little more. I think I have enough in the tank, but I may have to refill because I can see he's very thick. So what I'm going to do is get my tub brush right now. And I'm going to loosen up some of this coat so that we're sure to get it clean. Right, big guy? So that we're sure to get it clean. And you can see when they're shedding, guys, it just comes out so easily. It isn't like you need any furminators or special de-shedding tools to de-shed a double coat. We just need a brush. And let's think about that for a second. A brush, a comb, conditioner, shampoo, that's how you de-shed a dog. Now, why all of a sudden do we have to have all these, you know, aggressive rakes and furminators and stuff? We didn't have them 20 years ago when we were grooming dogs, 30 years ago, and we didn't need them. But in my opinion, all that stuff is just marketed to people because they think that we are so lazy that we always want to take the easy way out. And look, if you just run this through your dog, this furminator or coat rake, all of a sudden, all the hair comes out. Well, that is true. But what happens is, it also damages the coat, and that's something that we don't want. So, I'm so tired of us all being played like that. That's why here on Go Groomer, we share secrets that'll benefit you and your pets. So, I'm gonna get my water temperature right, and we're, I'm gonna wet him a little bit first. I wanna get this, soften up the dander near his his skin because uh, 
He's just got such a thick coat today. So you're going to see some really awesome de-shedding the right way. All right, guys. Um, I do use a Prima bathing system, and I will be using it. I'm using the Encore model today. And um, typically, you do not have to pre-wet your dog with, with the Prima bathing system. But I am because this is a double thick coat. And speaking of double thick coats, guys, I have some amazing footage that I took a week ago with uh, another groomer. I went to her salon and we groomed this beautiful, beautiful Newfoundland dog. I've been working on that video and I'll tell you right now, guys, that's going to be more of a like a lesson episode video. It's going to be around an hour long. I got so much stuff that I want to share with you and so much footage that I took for that video that I can't cram it into a 10 minute video. And I don't want to make it like a one, two parter thing. I figured I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to start a new series on my channel that is more like that, that is extensive lessons. You know, we're really just going to detail and, and not try to race through the groom, but I think you guys will enjoy it. I'm so excited. I, I, I've been working on it every spare chance I get. It's a lot of editing for this video that's coming out with the new Funland, and it's going to be for everybody. It's not just for channel members, but since I didn't go live on Monday because of the holiday, I would really, really, really like to get this video up in the next couple days. So keep your eyes out for it, guys. I'm going to lock my Prima bathing system into place with a coat this thick. It's always a good idea to move the coat around. We want to be sure whether we're using a bathing system or not to get into all the way into the skin, guys. Through the coat into the skin. Because that is, <laughs> yeah, that drain gurgling. That is what is going to loosen up the dander that's at the skin. And it's also going to release all the shedded hair that's just hanging in his coat. When we see our dogs shedding, when we pet them and the hair is flying, that is hair that is already let go. We just need to get it out of the coat. And that's the whole idea of these shedding. It's not forcing out additional coat that's not ready to come out. Because what you'll do if you do that is you will create a situation that you do not want, which is your dog will produce an abundance of undercoat and that messes up his coat and what it was designed to do so stick with me guys i won't lead you astray when it comes to coat care skin care for your dogs how to properly clip them what tools to use and what tools to just completely avoid that's the kind of stuff we share on the channel and that's why the channel was created right big boy and this guy here text i've been working text i've been working with him since he was a puppy he's 10 years old i was just talking to his owner about that a little bit ago i'm like he's 10 how does that happen i i remember so so clearly like the first time i groomed him but i had mentioned earlier about how i walked him straight into the tub and he just got in here on his own that's important to get your your large breeds in when they're puppies long before they're full grown because you're training them to get on the grooming table you're training them to accept the force dryers to get in the tub on their own if you would get a three four year old golden retriever that's never been in a grooming salon before and expect him to get up on the table he's not going to have a clue what you want him to do and most likely you're going to have to pick him up and put him up there so it's very important for all you pet groomers to insist that you get big dogs in as puppies and for all you pet owners that you take your dog to a groomer out of the gate when they're about two months old no later even younger because the sooner we start working with them the, the, the easier it is on your dog and on the groomer and your groomer you know i'm 
I've been grooming for many years, guys. At this point, if somebody calls me up and says, Hey, I got a lab. He's two. Will you groom him? I'll say, Oh, he's two. Has he ever been to a groomer before? No, this is going to be his first time. I can't wait to give him a spa treatment. I'm like, spa treatment? This dog's going to think he's being attacked. There ain't going to be no spa treatment. He's two, three years old. And I actually refuse dogs, guys, all the time. Because and I, that's just me. That's the way I want to work. I'm like, I'm not dealing with it anymore. I used to take that stuff when I was 30 years old. I used to pick them up, put them in the tub. and you know, I can't do it anymore. I, it affects me. It affects my back. So I have to, it's my choice as a professional to say, mm, I'm sorry, I can only work with big dogs if I've seen them from puppy up. And a lot of times the owners don't understand, but everybody says you're the best, I need to get my dog into you. I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, when you get your dog, you understand that they have grooming needs. You don't wait till they're two or three to realize that. So the way it goes sometimes. I'm going to use a little bit of Davis degrease in his tail. His tail is super thick. Look at this, guys. Look how big that tail is. Let me see if I can zoom you guys in a little closer while I'm bathing him because he's going to be in the tub for a little bit. I don't rush this tub process because it's so important to get them clean. Move you over there. That's better. I know sugar pee. All right, so um, in my Prima system, I'm using Bark to Basics One Step Silky Shampoo. I really like that one. A lot of times I'll go for a hypoallergenic shampoo this time of year because it is allergy season on the East Coast. Kind of changes season. Good job, buddy. Um, but for him today, I was like, I just really like the one step silky on his coat. So I put that in the tank today. Good job, buddy. Really got to get that clean back in there. Uh, we will be de-shedding him a lot on the table today, guys. With the force dryer and a comb. He has a couple areas of concern on his skin today. He's been kind of chewing at on his on this side of them, so I'm going to take a closer look at that one when I flip him around here. And I think it's caused by an abundance of undercoat because I can see how thick he is today, and which means this bath and de-shedding is going to. Ooh, we're out of shampoo already. <laughs> we are going through it, aren't we? I gotta fill up my Prima system. Add some more shampoo so you guys will actually get to see that process. So let me do that now. Flip you around. All right. <laughs> That's our Prima system. Okay, so normally I would have liked to use the salon model for him, which is right here, my Prima salon model, because it holds 14 gallons of shampoo. But I didn't think about that this morning. I had a small dog come in first. And she's poor little 14-year-old Lassa. She's doing okay, but not really. Anyway, so I didn't think about it. I was like, oh, I got a small dog. I'll, I'll just use the Encore model. Then I was like, oh, my gosh, you got text coming in, you dippy. <laughs> Texas is going to take a lot of shampoo because this model only t holds seven gallons of water and shampoo, guys. So, normally, like I said, I would have used, definitely used my salon model when I have a large breed on the schedule. But I made a boo-boo. Not that this model won't work for me. It works exactly the same. The only difference is it only holds seven gallons of water and shampoo where the salon model this guy back here holds 14. it's okay big boy i'm going to be using the facial scrub and a loofah when i wash his face here in just a second 
We've got a lot of work to do, don't we, big guy? He's going home at 1.30. Okay. 1.30 or 2. Yeah, I think we got plenty of time to hang out. I do. All right. I'm going to mix that, and I'm going to go ahead and start washing his face. So we got the shampoo in there. Turn my lid, lock that into place. Ugh. We're going to mix it for about a minute or so. I know, honey. Good job. I'm going to try to talk to you guys through this whole process. That's why I want to make sure I'm mic'd good when I'm doing these live demos so that you guys can at least hear what I'm trying to explain very well. Especially as it's loud. We got this system going. We, we're going to have a dryer going in a little bit. Um, you can hear me, obviously, with when I'm mic'd, so I'm happy about that. Just going to wet this a little down in here some more. I'm going to run some more water through what we've washed just to loosen it up again. You, just, you can't get them clean enough, guys, but um, the cleaner the dog is, the better it would be shed. That's, that's very true. Very, very, very true. Good job, big boy. I'm not going to thoroughly rinse all that shampoo off of him. I want some of it to sit in his coat. Now I'm going to rinse his face. Hold his ears down flat against his head. Because we do want to clean those ears real nice. Oh, you guys probably can't see me. <laughs> I really need a film crew. Oh my goodness. Sorry guys. You can see now, right? All right. Just gonna keep letting that mix. We're gonna be using the Tropical Clean Facial Scrub as soon as I wet his, his face. And I'm gonna show you how I wash their faces with a loofah and the Tropical Clean Facial Scrub. Good job, big boy. Ready. Turn that back to apply shampoo. And I just have, I buy this stuff by the gallon, so I put it in a, another bottle and keep it in the tub. And this stuff is safe to use around the eyes. All products always say avoid getting in the eyes because they have to, especially these days with everybody wanting to sue. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna wet my loofah because the more the wet the wetter it is the more uh, it will push the lather of your products but this is wonderful to use on the face of your dogs especially like this guy you could use this on his body I've had people ask me if I have a long coated breed can I use the loofah on the body won't that tangle it well if you're doing this yeah but, you know, if you're just trying to get it in the skin or in the private areas, the pads of feet, I'd say that those would be the areas I would focus on with a long-coated breed. But I definitely love to use it with when I wash the faces of these dogs. All right. We're back in business. Good job. And I wash the top of his head with the Prima. I really want to get that good and clean. Hold the ears down and get them good and clean. If you do get a little water in your dog's ears, guys, don't don't fall into this, everybody. Oh my gosh, the groomer caused my dog an ear infection. Your dog should be able to get a little bit of water in their ears if that does happen. I always try to avoid it. But I get water in the, my ears every day when I shower. Every single day. I don't think I've had an ear infection since I've been a kid. But anyway, if you do get a little bit of water in your dog's ears, that's why I always clean the ears with ear cleaning solution after the bath because that will flush it out. 
so still not a reason to get all worked up. What else has been going on? Oh my gosh, I, um, I have a couple of videos that I'm working on, but right now I'm trying to get that new Funland video up and out for you guys. Another one that I'm working on is safe handling and how to handle your dog, like how to work with fear and behaviors like that when we're grooming. And I know that is a real thing for you guys and for us groomers too. So I'm putting together a very good video about that. I'm not sure when it'll be finished, but it's going to be so worth it, guys. Um, and that's going to be teaching you how to understand the language of dog. I'm going to have to move you guys. I don't think you can see. Oh, yeah, you could. There you go. Yeah, how to understand what your dog is saying, how to speak their language. Like, when you have a dog that's fearful of being handled, doesn't know the groomer, how are you supposed to actually approach that dog in order to keep them calm, cool, and collected so that you can work with them in the grooming salon? It's, the grooming salon is a bit of a stressful situation already for a dog. Don't forget that. Whether they're used to it or not, it's stressful because the owner's leaving them. So to a dog, they don't realize mom will be right back. They don't understand that. So they're already a little stressed. You really need to make sure that you can provide some type of comfort and security for the dog when you're, they're left in your care. So I'm going to teach you guys all that. And if it's your own dog, and you say, you know, hey, I, I don't know why he's upset. I don't know why he's crying. Is he, is he in pain or is he just anticipating pain? You know, I'm going to teach you what all this means. How... How your dog behaves on the grooming table and what it means and how to change his mind and, and let him be okay and let him be confident with what you guys are doing together because you're working together. Don't forget that. You're working together with the dog. And there again, don't rush and just run a little shampoo through your dog and say, okay, I gave him a bath, now I'm ready to shed him because if you don't get that shampoo all the way into the skin and get that skin clean and the coat clean from the skin out, all your efforts are gonna be wasted because you're still gonna have a dirty coat and you won't be able to properly de-shed it right and your dog's not gonna be as clean as he needs to be, which with a double coat means that you could actually see some beginnings of skin infections if we don't clean the undercoat because good job baby the undercoat is their filter to their skin it also is an insulator between the skin and the top coat and it regulates their body temperature whether it's cold temperatures or hot temperatures okay big boy so it's important to clean the undercoat as if it were a filter just like changing the filter in your car and your uh, water system you, know, you gotta change those filters they get gunged up right and that's what happens with a double coat because the double coat's doing its job which is collecting stuff before it can get to the skin but if we don't change that filter and clean that filter it'll become clogged and it'll start harboring bad things against the skin and now we're gonna have a problem so that's why it's important to have your double coated breed on a schedule of no more than eight weeks they have to be groomed properly and if you're doing it yourself that's fine it just has to be done properly if it's not done you're going to see double coated breeds that get matted you're going to see double coated breeds that can't regulate their body temperature and you know they could actually overheat and you're also going to find what looks like allergy problems is really a skin problem caused by a dirty coat. So, we don't have to worry. We share those secrets here, guys. We tell you the truth. We tell the truth, don't we, Tess? Yeah, we do. Because we want what's best for you guys and your pet owners. We want happiness and bliss. Blissful pet owners and pet ownership all over the world. I'm going to get this as clean as possible, guys. 
I'm just kind of doing overkill right now with the bathing. You can't get them clean enough. Believe me. Could never be clean enough. No dog could ever be clean enough, in my opinion. As long as you over rinse, that's the key. Always want to over rinse everything off your dog. You don't want anything staying in that undercoat, any product. Because what that will do then is start to irritate your skin. And what is the largest organ in their body, my friends? Their skin. The largest organ in their body. And it definitely needs to be cared for properly. Oh, you guys probably think I'm a broken record. I say the same things over and over again. But I'm pretty sure you guys will be able to... You're probably thinking things before I even say them. Because you guys are just doing such an awesome job of applying all these secrets to your pets at home. And if you're a professional and... I just can't share enough of this with you guys because it benefits your pets. And that makes me very, very happy. There's a lot of professionals in the industry that disagree with sharing the way I do. They say, well, you pay for that education, and, and you pay for your extended education. And I'm like, of course I did. And that's why I'm qualified to share it. <laughs> and guess what? The larger this channel grows and the more people that view my videos, I get paid from YouTube. So actually, I am getting paid for sharing my information. So why shouldn't I? Just that I'm reaching a bigger audience than any magazine could or that any trade show could. So, that's just the way it goes. That's what I chose to do. Good job, baby boy. Okay. You hear that, guys? That's it. That's the end of the road for our shampoo. I was trying to run it out, too, by the way. Now, I'm not going to really mess with brushing him too much while the shampoo's in, I'm going to kind of run a brush through him when I put the conditioner in him. We'll be using the um, coat handler under coat control conditioner today, guys. But I do need to let shampoo, any shampoo, you want to let it sit on your dog's skin for about four to five minutes, four or five minutes, something like that, um, just to really break down and adhere to the dirt break down the grime so it can be rinsed away. If you wash him and rinse him right away, it's kind of not ideal. You really need to let that sit in the coat for uh, about four minutes at least, and that's what Prima recommends. But that would go even if you don't use a bathing system. If you wash your dog by hand and use mixing bottles to dilute your shampoo properly, which, don't forget, guys, all shampoo is dilutable, even if it doesn't say. So play around with the ratio that you find works well and gives you good lather. If you're not getting good lather, then you need to add a little more shampoo to your dilution ratio. When I say the dilution ratio, this particular shampoo is supposed to be diluted 16 parts water to one part shampoo. And they all vary, so good job. And I did just get a ton of hair out. I'm just, just gently running a brush through him. I wasn't even trying to really de-shed him. I was just trying to move the product through his coat, <laughs> which it, it helps him to get cleaner. So I'm going to rinse for a while now on this side, and then we're going to add conditioner over here. Look down, buddy. Good job. I cover the nose while I'm rinsing it. I don't block his airways, but... I just keep water from going in his nostrils. Good job, buddy. And you know, guys, we've talked about a couple cool things over, now this channel's been going for a couple years now, hasn't it? Um, we've talked about, hey, what do you do if you got a dog like this and you, you can't wash them at home? They're too big, you don't have a sprayer, you can't keep them in the tub. Don't forget to look for pet wash stations, guys. 
um, all your pet values have them. Uh, there's a lot of mobile um, pet wash stations. They're, they're not mobile. They're stationary, but they can be moved by, like, um, All Paws Pet Wash. They have several. Um, look for them. Just Google it. Google now has locators on all, everything like that. So if you got to drive 45 minutes to, to a pet wash station, do it. Plan it every six weeks. That's what you're doing. And they're set up for you with force dryers, with sprayers, with the proper bathing applicators. And they're set up to get your dogs clean. Because if you're bathing your dog and brushing your dog and you're not getting them clean, you need to change them. You need to change stuff up, whether that's your setup or your technique. Or watch more Go Groomer videos. And I do have videos on my channel, a um, couple of them, using pet wash systems to show you what I thought about it. And me as a professional going and using... Uh, pet wash systems. I did one that was at a car wash. It was a pet wash system, an enclosed pet wash system and a car wash. And I did the other one at Pet Value. That was really nice. That was with a Columbus Spaniel. And I really enjoyed that because it's climate controlled. You know, so in the winter time, in the summertime, it doesn't matter. Here on the East Coast, it's cold in the winter. So the pet wash stations that are at car washes and stuff like that they're typically not heated so I wouldn't want to take my dog there in the winter right this undercoat control by um hi honey this is by who is it by coat handler it really loosens the undercoat guys now I'm gonna just sort of brush that through with the lay of his coat meaning the way the coat lays and the hair is going to start flying out. This is how you de-shed a dog, guys. Sometimes you got to hold the hair up to get under there in those thick areas. This is how you do it. You don't need a furminator. You don't need a rake. You don't need it. If you want to be sure that you're just pulling the right amount of undercoat out when you're bathing and de-shedding your dog, then you follow this procedure because your brush will only pull out what's ready to come out. Right, big guy? Like, no. And the conditioner, you want to let it set on for about five minutes, too. So that's why it's perfect time to start brushing it through your dog's coat. Let me make sure you guys can see good. I guess you can see good enough, right, guys? Gosh, he's cute. You are adorable. And you're so nice. And so is Augie, guys. I was grooming Augie the other day. And I also have Augie on my channel as the video that I used for full groom on a golden retriever. And that was a nice edited video, you know, the steps to grooming and de-shedding. A golden retriever. Seems that all you golden retrievers are quite nice, mister. Yes. Now I'm going to rinse that a bit just to loosen it through, get it running through his skin and coat again, but I'm not going to completely rinse him off. Still going to let that sit on there. Because I'll just let, when you add water to your product I just brush it through so I kind of dispersed it evenly through his coat. The water then breaks down the conditioner a little bit more and lets it run through the coat even more. So let's turn around big boy. Come on over here Tex. Come on. Come on over. There you go. That's good. Good job. Now I'm going to rinse this a bit more because I do still have some shampoo in there. From earlier. I'm going to condition this side of text. And you, you want to saturate the coat because that's going to let your product run through the coat nicely and it's just going to add more 
ability to work the product through the dog's coat if you, if you get the coat good and wet. Okay, big guy. Looks like our drain is starting to find its not liking golden retriever hair. It's getting a little clogged. All right. Make sure you guys can see since I turned him. Let's turn you a little more. All right. Okay. And we're going to condition this side of Tex. Tex has Lyme disease. He lives in, he lives in the woods. And he's been vaccinated for it. This is why I, sometimes I tell you guys I don't believe in all these vaccinations. Tex has been vaccinated for Lyme disease. And he's also treated for fleas and ticks regularly. And he still has Lyme disease. It's okay, buddy. So I think a lot of that's just a bunch of baloney. Another way for you to spend another 80 bucks a year on another vaccination. I just... I don't like that. I don't like deceitfulness. If you're telling me it's worth it for me to put this into my dog's body, protect him from getting Lyme disease, that's one thing. But if he still stands a good chance of getting it, why aren't you telling me that? Why don't you give me the vaccination? Because then you get so disappointed you thought you had your dog protected. And, you know, we're in Pennsylvania, guys. There's a lot of woods. There's a lot of things like that to worry about around here. But still, I just don't think that our, our vets around here are being as honest as they should be with, um, you know, the potency of these vaccinations, a lot of these. And they push flu vaccinations. I've never gotten my dog a flu vaccination. I'm afraid that over vaccinating causes some of the problems that we see with their dogs these days. That's my opinion and my feeling, so I carry that on to the care that I provide for my own pets and how I feel about that. And even my kids. I don't over-vaccinate my kids either. I mean, I get them the vaccines that they need, but there's many that I have refused. Not like the chicken pox or polio, obviously measles, well, all that I get. They've had all their shots. My kids are good puppies, but <laughs> there's some other new vaccines that, you know, everybody's like, oh, if you do this, you can protect them against sexually transmitted diseases. And I just don't feel there's enough studies done because these are newer things to, to, to make those claims. And we're putting stuff in human bodies, you know, it's scary to say that you trust that it's supposed to do what it will do. It will do what it says it will. It's scary. And that's the same for our pets. Good job, buddy. Now, I have noticed over the years with Tex that he desheds best with the force dryer and a comb when we get to that stage of the groom. Now, Augie, in my opinion, desheds the best in the tub with conditioner. But Augie's coat is not the same as Tex's coat. So you really can't say, this is how I will get, I'll get the same result every time if I do this. This is why we still do the same steps every time, whether, you know, you have a dog that has a super, super dense undercoat or a very, very soft, easy to de-shed undercoat. You run through the same steps, but at some point, one of those steps works better on the, on each coat type, each dog's coat. Good job. Remember, their top coat is designed to kind of repel water and dirt, which keeps the undercoat and the skin protected. A double coat is such an amazing coat. It has such a huge job to do for the dog. And shaving a dog's double coat is is wrong mm, that's just the way i feel i'm also going to be doing a video in the very near future about identifying skin issues and coat issues and 
how to identify them. And I think that pet owners should have the, the that training and not just rely on on their vets and their groomers to tell them if something is is amiss with their dog's coat or their skin. I want to help you guys understand how to identify that before it becomes a huge problem. Because once the skin becomes really compromised, remember the skin's the largest organ in their body. Once that organ becomes extremely compromised, that goes through their system. That affects other organs. So obviously we don't want to wait until the skin is so mad that it is affecting other aspects of your dog, like their bloodstream, their other organs, and so forth. Good job, big boy. Let me just rinse your face. It feels a little bit soft from that conditioner still. Some people also ask, should you condition a dog because it like a dog like him takes a long time to dry as it is. And they'll say, if you condition them, doesn't it take longer to dry the dog? Here's the thing. Depends on what product you're using. I, I chose to use a conditioner that is very lightweight. So it, it will do its job as a conditioner. It will help me de-shed him too, which is important. That's why I want to use a conditioner on this breed. But because it's a lightweight and it rinses so easily out of the coat, it does not weigh down the coat at all. In fact, and it doesn't over moisturize. So that actually will help balance his, the moisture level in his coat and allow him to dry faster than if I hadn't conditioned him. I hope that makes sense. Believe me guys, it's true. I have tried it both ways many times over the years. Do I condition a Samoyed? Do I not condition a Samoyed? So I would try it one week, one grooming session where I would condition, and then the next grooming session I wouldn't, and I would see the difference. And I've done that. I've put everything to the test over the years because obviously I want to I wanna do what will enable me to best groom the dog as quickly as possible as well as produce winning results. Let me check on you guys. Let me check on my cool kids. Yeah, I need to move you over a little bit. There you go. Okay, we almost got you out of the tub, buddy. Yeah, see, I did not rush his bathing process because this is, I'd say this is about the most important part of de-shedding a dog. If you can't get that skin and coat properly worked and clean, the rest of it's not going to come out the way it needs to, guys. Just take your time when you're bathing and rinsing and conditioning and shampooing your dogs. Right, bud? See, if I could talk, I would say that. Right, Tex? <laughs> And I definitely want to rinse him until the water is completely running clean. That means there's no product left in his coat. Because if I do leave product in his coat, that can start to want to build up dirt and grime in his coat because it'll stick to it. It'll stick to the product that's left in there. If your dog is completely airy, bouncy, clean, and there's nothing for dirt and grime to stick to. Years ago, people used to say, wash your dog once a year, it's not good for them, whatever. That's not true. That's dumb. <laughs> if I had a dog like him, he would be at least every month thoroughly washed and brushed and dried thoroughly maybe more. The longer the coat, the dirty, the faster it will get dirty. The thicker the coat, the faster it will get dirty. And if a dog's coat's really dirty, that stuff is sitting in the undercoat because the undercoat's job is to collect it before it can get to the skin. So after that coat, that undercoat is so full of dirt and grime, it can't repel anymore. It has to be cleaned out. 
And that's the way you got to look at it. All right, sweetie. I think we got your rinse. Even the tail, guys. Your rinse it so good. I'm get it clean. Good job. All right. I like it. Okay, I'm just gonna squeeze off some of this water on you. Get it off of you. Good job, buddy. And again, I want you guys to watch. In a minute, I'm gonna get him out of the tub and back on the grooming table. I want you to see how that goes. I want you to see how he knows exactly what to do. I don't even have to tell him. And if I hadn't gotten a chance to work with him at a young age, I wouldn't have been able to, to teach him that. If he's coming in and he's a large breed and I have to pick him up because I can't convince him that he's safe to jump up on the table by himself, after I pick him up and put him up there, to him, that tells him that's how I get on the table. You pick me up and you put me up there. I don't want to be picking up a 130-pound dog. <laughs> I can't. I probably can. I don't want to. My back will go into spasms for days, and then I can't do my job. And look at all the dogs that won't be getting their beautiful groom because the groomer is laying in bed in agony. <laughs> Oh, I just jumped ship there. Need a little bit of water. Oh, yeah. You can't bring enough water to, to work with you. I'm getting my second one out. Okay, honey, now is when I'm going to clean his ears. I'm just going to towel him off a little first to remove some of the excess water off his face. This is the absorber towel, guys. You know I love them. It should be linked in the description if you want to pick one up for 10% off. I do have an affiliate link because this is one product that I said, oh, yeah, I'll put my, I'll, I'll sign up for that. I believe that the product is worthwhile for my audience. This is one for sure. Good job. So now that's good. You want them to shake. They shake as much water off as they can. So I'm going to saturate a cotton ball with my ear cleaner, which is the Bark to Basics ear cleaner. Because I'm actually, good boy, I'm going to clean. I'm squeezing that down. It's running down in his ear right now. And at the same time, I'm wiping off the earlobe, everything on the outside that I can see. I know I can't show you guys this like I want to. And then I'm going to go down in and just gently, oh, he's like, that feels so good. But by squeezing that down in there, I'm letting that solution run down in his ear. In case any water got in there, that solution is going to flush it out. And then hopefully he's going to shake. That's a good boy. And then if anything did get in there, he just shook it out. So it's so funny how you're so smart. You like know exactly what to do. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other ear. I turn this way, Tex. Don't wanna get any ear cleaner in their eyes ever, guys. Cause it always contains a slight amount of alcohol, which would absolutely burn. Um, And that alcohol in there is what dries up the bacteria in the water that possibly gets in the ear. Ooh. Oh, does that feel good? Oh my gosh, he's grinding into me. He's like, yep, that feels good. And now hopefully you shake one more time. We got a lot of dirty stuff out of there, guys. We did good. All right, are you ready to see him get out of the tub? We're going <laughs> to need a bigger shop. All right. Look how good he is. Okay. We're going to get you right here, buddy. We get your grooming lead ready. Just towel you off a little bit more. 
and then we'll tie you off on the table. I know. I have a couple towels put down on the table to soak up anything that's dripping. This coat's like a sponge. He'll be dripping. I'm going to go ahead and put him on his grooming leash so that he's ready to get right on the table and I can hook him right to the grooming arm. And my little grooming hitch that I use, you guys know about that. Take him off of his tub leash. And he's going to get right on that table. Watch this. You ready, buddy? I'm going to go right here, right there. Careful. Can you make it? It's just so impressive how, how these dogs learn. But they have to be taught what it is you want them to do. And you did great. Yes, you did. You're my good boy. Tex. And that's how it works. That's why, you know, we're so picky about getting him in at a young age. It's best for the dog, too, because if he's not feeling comfortable and safe on the grooming table and he's trying to throw himself off, he could throw himself off. He could hurt himself. He'll take the table with him. So it's training, guys. If you groom your dog at home, you need a grooming table. <laughs> I want to make sure you guys can see pretty good. I know, honey. He's not used to being a superstar. But you are. See, I am a superstar. Yeah, these absorber towels are great. They really pull a lot of water out of the coat. And I'll go and wring it out in the tub and I'll come back to him and absorb more water out of his skin and coat. It's amazing. Let me see if you guys can see this. I think you can see if I'm over here. It, that's what came out of him already. I just, that's so satisfying. I just love doing that. All right. And what I'm going to do here in a second is get my stand dryer warming up because I'm going to put that on him as well as we'll be force drying him. But the stand dryer is really going to help pull moisture out of his coat because it, it has a heated element. It's warm. And I can control the heat on the stand dryer. Um, the, there you go. The uh, force dryer does not have a heated element. It gets a little warm from the heat from the motor, but it'll never get hot. And that's why I like to use it. It's safe. Another reason why I like to use a force dryer on a double coat especially it not only saves you time in getting the dog dry, but it blows out the undercoat, blows it out of here. And you all right, buddy? Let me dry your butt and you can sit down if you want to. He's 10 years old, guys. Isn't he awesome? I mean, look how hard these dogs want to work for us. They want to do the right thing. They just need to know what we need them to do. Okay, I'm going to hook you here on the hitch to keep you facing forward. Would you like to sit? Tex, you can sit. There you go. Go ahead. He's so used to standing on the table because that's what I need him to do. He's not going to sit. Oh, honey. There's something else. That's good. Get as much of that water out of there as you can. Yeah, I'm going to miss a little quicker slicker in his coat, too. Here's the second one. I get as much of this water off of him as I can with the absorber towel. And then I'll miss the quicker slicker in and brush it through. I'm going to trim his nails. Now, his nails are pretty wore down because he's definitely active and he's a large breed. So he has a lot of weight on them feet. So they wear their nails down pretty nicely. Sometimes I can't clip anything off their nails or I would make it bleed. So if there's nothing to clip, then you don't clip it. It's nice when you can take care of that on your own, isn't it, buddy? Smarty pants. <laughs> Smarty pants. He's 
feeling like he's uh, just damp now, which is nice. That's what I like about these towels. They, they cut down on our drying time, don't they? See, that's your least favorite part. I must say, when it's force drying a double coat, that's probably like my favorite downtime in a grooming day because I'm not humping it, you know, fluff drying and clipping and I'm just force drying and combing out undercoat. It's very satisfying and it's almost like, like I said, it's like downtime in the, in the grooming day when I get to do a de-shed like this. I enjoy it. Not that it isn't work, it's work. <laughs> But it's satisfying. I like it. Okay, buddy. I'll just make sure your ears are nice and dry as best as possible. And we're going to get that dryer going in a second. Even getting those armpits, guys, these absorber towels pull all that moisture out. It's really nice. Gus is sacked out. <laughs> I got to show you guys that dog. He is sacked out. Little Gus is laying up on the couch. He doesn't play as well with, he's not as mellow as Big Gus is around other dogs. Little Gus is very mellow, but around other dogs, he's a little bit on guard, so I can't have him down here with that kind of attitude. Because <laughs> then it makes him a little unpredictable. He's actually been doing very well with dogs, but there are a couple dogs that he doesn't like. So knowing that, I'm like, well, you can't be in here then, buddy. But to be honest with you, he's perfectly happy laying upstairs on the couch all day. <laughs> That's what he does, doesn't he? All right, so I am going to grab my quicker slicker. Let's see where, he... maybe I'll move this back a little, guys. Try to get as much as possible for you. All right. Get my nail trimmers too while I'm here. Looks like I need to refill my quicker slicker. It's getting low. And brush wise, I believe I'm gonna use, I'm gonna try the Chris Christensen brush on him today. I think it'll work nice. Yeah, I like to brush them when they're wet. So with the quicker slicker, I would need to get it into the undercoat because the undercoat's what I'm trying to release when I'm shedding them. The top coat doesn't shed, it's the undercoat that sheds. So I'm trying to rub some of this down. You don't want to get too much product in because too much is too much. Then you'll start to add buildup. Stand up, bud. Good job. Uh, like I said, you want to get the quicker slicker into Gosh, into the undercoat so we can de shed it. And it, you, you can use quicker slicker, it doesn't have to be a double coated breed. The quicker slicker also helps to repel dirt after your dog is dried and cleaned. So I, I love the product, I use it on, on Big Gus too, and he doesn't shed, so to speak. I could live on an island with only dogs. And my husband. And maybe my kids too. And my mom. And you guys. Okay, I couldn't live on an island with just dogs. <laughs> I say that. I could go on vacation on an island with just dogs. How about that? I couldn't live without my favorite people. I do love people too. This coat feels amazing. I wish you guys could touch this. <laughs> Don't forget, guys, I made another promise. I like making promises. When we hit 50,000 subscribers, which I think we're almost at 32,000 right now. It's very impressive. 50,000, we're having another subscriber party live stream with my hubby. And we're going to give away another Prima bathing system to only United States people because that's the only people I can ship to. Um, 
but I'm also going to go visit that subscriber who wins the Prima bathing system. We'll spend a day together and hopefully groom a dog together, whether it's their own or if they're a professional groomer. And that will all be filmed for you guys too. Because it's so cool for us to, you know, to interact like that. And as you guys, you know, get to come too, you know. We all seem to already know each other and we've never met. We know each other through our communications and our chat, and through emails and through comments and through our private Facebook group that's really brought us close together too. If you guys haven't joined that private Facebook group, there's a link to it on my channel page. And then I have to approve you, but I will, no worries. And people are sharing some really great stuff there. And I'm in there too. I share stuff there too, but we all share. Which is better than just me sharing because you guys have a lot of value to bring to pets' lives too. You guys are, you know, have specific experience with certain tools, with certain breeds, with certain problems, with certain health problems. That's why we share. Because when we go through something, we can help other people by sharing that experience with them. And other dogs we're helping too. So yes, we were de-shedding him nicely, but this is only the tip of the iceberg for de-shedding here. Um, when we get that force dryer going, that's a, that's a different game then. It's game on. <laughs> Especially on Tech's coat, for whatever reason. This coat responds very well to the force dryer. And I will say this, when you're de-shedding most double-coated breeds, you won't get all the undercoat out that wants to come out until that coat is 100% dry with the dryer. So in other words, if you rush through your dogs, like you see people throw a dog in a cage dryer and then get them out and finish grooming them, that dog is not even de-shedded. It's like at all, at all. The force dryer, the brushing, this is how you de-shed a dog. I'm trying to just loosen up undercoat right now, guys. Because once I get that force dryer going, it's going to blow out of here. Let me brush your neck, too. We're doing good on time. So that's another reason why cage dryers are stupid. Um, aside from the fact that they're a health risk. Dogs tend to get themselves worked up when they're in an enclosed area in a crate. Some dogs are not used to being crated at all. So when they go to a groomer and the groomer not only puts them in a crate, but then they put this loud machine on them that's blowing air, it can cause the dog, their heart rate to go up, their body temperature to change, and them to have a heat stroke. Not cool. I, as a professional, or just as a human, should I say, would never want to risk putting a dog in that position. <laughs> and living with knowing that I did that? Holy crap. No thank you. Plus, I enjoy hands-on grooming. And putting a dog in a crate and turning on a dryer is not hands-on. And it's certainly not fun for the dog. And no, grooming is not always fun for the dog. I get it. But when I'm right here with him, that is adding comfort to him, believe it or not. If I put him in a crate and go over there and start making phone calls, he can see me over there. He knows that I'm not looking out for him. He knows that he's in it alone. He's in it alone. But if I'm right here with him, like, look at him. Watch, I walk away, he looks at me. Look. You think we're not in tune? We're in tune. Look, I walk over here. Is he looking at me? Look, I walk over here. We're in tune. That's the deal. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So, I like to keep my hands on the dogs at all times. 
because I'm not breaking that moment that we started an hour and a half ago when we started grooming, right? It's pretty cool. All right. I'm gonna trim your nails and then we're gonna start drying. The dryers do get loud, guys, so you can turn it down. I probably, I can still talk to you, so I'll probably keep talking. Um, you would be able to hear me very well with my mic on, um, but you also will just have to tolerate a little bit of dryer noise. Okay, I want him to stand before I raise the table. I'm gonna raise the table up so I can trim his nails and work with him a little better. This is a hydraulic table. The reason I have them on this table and not my electric table is because the grooming arm is here on this table and it keeps him facing this way. The grooming arm on my other table is on the side. It's a bigger table, but I feel he's more secure on this table and dogs tend to get a little jumpy with the dryers. So I wanna make sure that he's secured nicely on the table. And this table just seems to make them feel better when we're drying because dogs' ears are very sensitive and the dryers, they're loud to us, they're very loud to them too. So he does have a, a quite lengthy drying process ahead of him. I'm gonna put cotton in his ears, guys, to try to dull the noise. Good job, baby. Yeah, this area over here is where he's been chewing and he has such an abundance of coat. So I'm not seeing anything on the skin, like any irritation. It must have just been thick coat in that area that he was chewing at. Because it is, I am getting a lot of coat out of it. Okay, bud. Your hair is all over me, too. I'm going to take a look at these nails. I can definitely trim a little off the front nails. Good job, buddy. I'm going to do claw. Good job, bud. Let's see what the back ones look like. Just a little. Okay. Good boy, Tex. You got to make sure that when you pick their feet up, when you're trimming nails, that they're still able to stand comfortably or they'll wobble and you'll never, it'll upset them so you won't get anywhere. So, and then keep in mind how old the dog is. If he's 10 years old like this guy, you know. He's not as sturdy on his feet as he used to be. So when you pick a foot up to trim the nail, you're already taking a bit of his stability away. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you guys here for a minute and start force drying. I'm gonna need a comb and I'm gonna use this Activet matte zapper brush. Actually, this is my Le Pouche matte dematter brush. I need another swig of water. <sighs> Hair's everywhere. <laughs> Hair's everywhere. I'm going to warm up my stand dryer. Takes it a, about 45 seconds to warm up. And I'm going to put this on the front of them. You guys may notice this new purple cord on my KM10. Tracy gave it to me. I've always wanted to try it and she had one. And then she had a spare, so she gave it to me. It's a cord wrap and it keeps your cord from wrapping up around itself. And it really works and they're very cheap. So I will be telling you guys about them in a, in a future video, live stream probably. We're gonna talk about some tools here soon, guys. I think we need to talk tools again. We've been talking food a lot. And look, you know, I'm gently going to pull through this coat. Just look what comes out. I mean, 
I could de-shed him like this and just use the stand dryer, but the point that I'm combing through this wet coat and sliding out the dead coat is how I'm de-shedding him. But the force dryer is going to do this nicely for me too. Then I just have to come through at the end and give him a good final brush. But the force dryer is going to blow this stuff out of his coat. Also, you'll see me when I'm force drying, you're going to see me using this comb. And this is a wider tooth comb. I'm not using the fine edge. Because I, I just want to pull out the undercoat. That's all I'm looking to do. So you'll see me using this in combination with my force dryer today, guys. I'm going to try to comb through this. His, back, his pants here are really thick. I do not trim this guy back here. I don't prefer to do that on golden retrievers. Um, if they're really thick here, guys, it's because they need de-shedded. And I know the hair is thicker here, but when you trim it, it grows back. It starts to grow back real ugly. I don't like the way it looks. So unless the customer really wants these pants trimmed, I don't do it. They have to tell me to do it because if he were my dog, when I'm grooming dogs, I groom them like I would my own. If he were my dog, I wouldn't do that. And see, this is what, this is what was, he was chewing at over there. Remember I told you he had a problem area? He's got like buildup of undercoat under, on this leg over here. And that's probably what he was chewing at. I can feel the denseness of it here, so it needs to come out. And it is. See that? It's kind of matted. Double coats can get matted. Does that mean you have to shave them? No. It means we got work to do with this undercoat. Shaving it would be wrong. It would ruin their coat. Yeah, he's definitely got a buildup of something over here. So I'm going to try to relieve a lot of this right now before we start force drying. Good job, buddy. This is just warm, not hot. Just trying to pull some moisture out of his coat, especially since I don't force dry their face and their ears. I'll force dry around the ears, but not really too close to them. Good job, bud. I'm going to put some cotton in his ears. Yeah, see this? Almost matted undercoat, see? He's definitely got a lot going on there today. I'm going to pull a cotton ball in half, ball it up a little bit. I'm gonna use, get the hair off of it. There's hair stuck to everything right now. Use the hemostat and I'm gonna put it down in his ear a little bit, carefully. Right there. Then he can't shake it out. It's right there. I can see it. But it's in the hole. It's in there. It's in there. So that is going to dull the sound a little bit of the dryers. Nice and easy. There we go. Just don't fall asleep on me, buddy. And then I, and I'm, see, because they will shake. And if I didn't put it down in there, he'd shake it out. I, I leave this laying out that reminds me that I have cotton in his ears. That's how I do that. <laughs> so when I put cotton in their ears, I leave my hemostat laying right out where I'll see it so that when I go, why is my hemostat sitting on my table? It's because I gotta remember to pull the cotton out of his ears. It's, it's my reminder. Because normally I would put my hemostat back on the tool table like normal. So just little sneaky tricks that we do. Try to remind ourselves, guys. It's like a little post-it note, but it's not a post-it note. Good job. I know you're very thick, buddy. I'm just trying to loosen some of this out before we start drying. See, it's coming out quite easily. It's very thick, honey. It's very thick. Good job. I don't know 
why it's so thick over here. See, they're like, it's like matted. It's weird. I don't know why it was so thick over there. If it started to get a little matted because he was chewing that, his owner said he's been chewing at that area, but I don't see any problems with the skin. Skin looks good. So I'm assuming he was chewing because the undercoat was getting matted. So he was trying to get it out. That's what I think was going on. So let me help you with that, buddy. I'll get those mats out of there. We'll get them out. And definitely thankful that we conditioned because it helps to add a little bit of pliability to the hair so I can work it while it's damp really works nicely when their coat's damp. You can de-shed a dog, de a dog easily when they're clean and still wet. Let's pull some of this moisture out in the, your thick areas here, bud. Good job, buddy. I know you're tired. Yeah, there's just an abundance of undercoat on him today. I wonder if it had something to do with, we had some seriously hot days about three weeks ago, and then it kind of got cool. So I wonder if it made his coat think it's the change of season. Probably. The change in his body temperature like that must determine when they start letting go of that undercoat. Because this is more than normal for him. He definitely has a, a thick undercoat, but this is more than normal for Tex. We're just picking away at it until it releases. I'm not pulling too hard on him. Right, buddy? Okay, bud. Oh, so good. We just have a, a lot on your coat today, big guy. Some people like to wear a mask when they groom, especially when they are de-shedding a dog. I don't because when I wear a mask, it just seems to collect the hair against my face and it just bugs me and I can't do it. We all have our issues, right guys? I don't like hair stuck to my face. All right, sweetie. I think we're gonna loosen everything up. We're gonna see what that force dryer is gonna do. I'm gonna change the nozzle on my force dryer also for his coat type. I'm gonna use a flat the flat tip. I'll show you that in a second, guys. The flat head nozzle. Good boy. I have two. I'm going to start with this one. This is the wider one. So you can see it really just condenses and directs it, the hair, but it also will want a, a wavy coat. It'll help it to lay flat as I'm drying it instead of blow it up the wrong way. I don't want him to look like this when he's done. I want him to look like this, smooth. Because he's a flat-coated dog. Even though he's a double coat, he's a flat coat. All right. We'll be trimming his feet today, too. You ready, big boy? All right, guys. Let's get fired up. Let's get fired up. <laughs> He's like, you are such a dork. So this is the tip that we have on. I'm gonna change it. Changes very easily. I'm using the Shern Bayo dryer, guys. We talk about that a lot. It's a good, affordable dryer for professionals and for home groomers. I'm gonna start off on a lower setting. I'm getting some of that coat off of me. All right. Every now and then my hose will pop out. So bear with me. 
and at first I'm just trying to whisk off the water. You can see, can you see a spray of water and undercoat coming out of him? I'm going to go around the whole dog trying to release the water that is against his skin first. So then I can hone in and start drying, which will release his undercoat. Good job, buddy. Cover that ear. Okay, big boy. It's a lengthy groom for a double-coated breed. See that undercoat going? <laughs> um, so let them sit as much as they can. So satisfying. <laughs> Do you want to hold the forest fryer as close to the dog's skin as their hair is long? That's how you avoid whip knots. And I'm actually going to get a little closer than that to get his, to whisk the water away from his skin. As soon as I dry around his neck right here, I'm going to turn this up a little. It's, it's nowhere near. I, I don't think I've ever used this dryer even on all the way high. I've never. Jamie, if you're in the chat, I think you just got this dryer. Hopefully you're liking it. If your dog doesn't care for it, put the cotton balls in their ears. Remember, they've got to get used to it. They're not used to this. She is used to it. Your dogs are not used to a force dryer. You've got to ease them in slowly. You would start in the back, far away from the head. Get them used to it. Always keep your other hand on them. Or rub, relaxing them, massaging them. It relaxes them. Let them know that you got their back. They're safe. This thing is not going to hurt them. You have to convince them of that sometimes, guys. And it takes work. Good job, buddy. Let's move this down underneath a little bit. Good job, baby. Leave my brush. I see undercoat that wants to fly. I'm going to... Help it pick it away with my brush. Good job, buddy. You guys are gonna love the new Funland video I got coming out. It's this on a larger scale, but up close because I did a lot of the filming while the other groomer was working. So makes it nice. Good job, buddy. Definitely have a lot of undercoat, kiddo. See, that's why he's kind of itchy. He's going like this. That undercoat is it, it was trapping. It was trapping things in it and getting irritating his skin. Because it was time for this undercoat to be released. up in a second guys I'm just trying to loosen up stuff around his neck before I turn up the dryer good job buddy it's so sick unreal whatever that you know if there's any horse people out there whatever the reason is but the horses get their double coats 
and their men sheds when they shed their coats and whatnot is the same with dogs. They get the change in temperature outside, changes their body temperature and starts molting that coat, I guess. Good job, buddy. buddy. As he decided to stand up, that I'm going to work in those areas that I couldn't get to. As soon as I go around and start doing his butt, he's going to want to sit because he doesn't like it back there. He's still, before trying, I'm still working my way around the dog. Remember, I started over there. I came around here. Now I'm coming around here. In a minute, I'm going to be back here. I'm still trying to whip all the water off of his skin, and then I will hone in on drying it. I will slow down in those areas and start drying it. But you still, with a force dryer, do not want to sit here and hold it in the same spot, because it does get warm. It could burn them. Good job, buddy. Always use your brush to loosen up undercoat that you can see is just clearly just hanging there in the coat. Good boy. I forgot to eat lunch today. I wonder if my stomach's brown. Job, big guy. Remember, guys, this is the proper way to work a double coated breed. And that goes for small breeds that are double coated, like a Spitz or a Pomeranian. Work it the same way, just on a smaller scale. Good job. Australian Shepherd, many Australian Shepherds. It would work it the same way. A Sheltie. A full collie. Bernice Mountain Dog. Even a Labrador. I would do the same steps as I'm doing today with Tex. Good job, buddy. This is a good time for you guys to chit chat and have a little coffee break in the chat. Find out how everybody's doing today. Because it's. This is going to go on for a little while. <laughs> right, buddy? Say, yo, you betcha. 
You betcha, I've done this a few times. Yes, I have, haven't you, buddy? Uh-huh. This is interrupting his nap time. He's not too happy about that. I'm sure he'll take an extra long siesta today when he gets home. Right, buddy? He feels very clean and very soft. Come on up, bud. There you go. I'll help you stand. I know you don't like to stand when it comes to your hiney. Your hiney cheeks being dried. All right. Work the tail for a little bit since you sat down. Good boy. Good boy. Can you guys see the hair flying out? As he dries, it changes. In the beginning, you probably saw clumps coming out because those were those were tightly clumped up undercoat chunks, <laughs> so to speak, and they were hanging in the coat. They were already shed. They were just hanging in the coat. So that forced the four dryer forced them out. Now that it's coat is percentage of it is dry, a good percentage of it, we're going to see fine hairs flying because now as the coat is dry, the force dryer is separating all the hair and the undercoat that has been shed and it will fly out in single, single hair, if that makes sense. I guess i got to work on my theories before I try to explain them to you guys. They sound a little crazy, I think. Good job, buddy. This is that size of it. So top little For whatever reason. Okay, big guy. dry it a little bit. I'm going to pull the moisture out of the under part of them. Good job. I'm going to remove this towel because it's, it's pretty saturated. So now when he sits on it, he's going to get wet again. So we don't want that. We want him to stay dry. So he spends less time drying. Good job, buddy. in my
ways and steps to groom every dog. And I've followed those steps today. Obviously, I'm not trimming his coat. I'm going to trim up his feet around his ears a little bit. That's about it. So I would skip the steps of the purple wood if I'm not trimming that and move on to the next step. I did a video that was very helpful, guys. Steps to grooming any dog. And I have a printable, printable version of those steps linked in the description of that video for you guys to follow. That helps you not forget a step of the groom. So look for that video if you need help with that, guys. It was a good one. I don't like the way my mic is acting. I know. It takes forever to dry a big dog. Horse dryer also gives you a, a great opportunity to, to see any new warts or skin issues on your dog. Or ticks. I often will find ticks on a dog when I'm horse drying, if they have any ticks. And occasionally this guy will come in with one, but it's usually dead on him because he is treated. But it takes a few days for the treatment to kill the tick. Okay, buddy. If you guys have ever taken your double-coated breed to a groomer and you pick the dog up and you pet him and he feels damp, that's not a good thing. Because what's going to happen is when he finally dries, all that last bit of undercoat that wasn't able to be pushed out because the coat wasn't quite dry, it's going to come out in your house, in your car. So I, I, I have seen that. I have seen that before, and I'm just like, the dog is supposed to be dried, that's how you shed them. You can't properly be shed a dog if he's still a little bit damp. It's going to hang on to that last little bit of undercoat, and as soon as the dog is dry, it's going to fall out. Like when he dries an hour later in your house. So it's going to fall out the last bit. That's not why you went to a professional groomer. It's okay, big guy. about me. He didn't turn around and look at me because I blew my face off. He's like, are you okay? I'm okay, buddy. I'm okay. All right, big guy.
other hand while you're drying to feel where they feel damp. Right here it feels pretty damp, so I need to focus on that area a little harder. Because as soon as it dries, that last bit of undercoat is going to come out. Good job. Tiny old bud. It ain't easy being beautiful, is it? Say this. This is real work here, being this pretty, isn't it? <laughs> Good job, buddy. It's just so important when you're grooming a double coat to clean that undercoat and to not neglect it. Neglecting it would be never brushing it and never washing it to clean it. Get it back to good, right? Good job, buddy. That's the worst thing you can do for a double coat is to ignore it. Then it can't do its job for your pet. It's okay, big guy. Good job, buddy. It's all right, big guy. You're doing great. Stay standing, guys. Put your hand under here. It reminds them that you want them to stay up. If they try to sit, you push harder up. So they know, oh, you want me up. They figure it out. 
a smart animal. Smarty pants. Are you a smarty pants? <laughs> so, yeah, I don't like to brag. I don't like to brag. What smarty pants? <laughs> I want to point out a couple of things, guys, that people overlook when it comes to why why the expense is so high to groom a double colt. For one, a lot of work, a lot of drinking, a lot of work, a lot of scrubbing. Another reason, as you can see, I've been running my dryers, which cost a lot of money as far as their the electricity usage. I've been running them already for what, 45 minutes or so? Yeah, close, half hour, and we're not done. So you're using a lot of electricity, uh, and that's definitely not cheap. I don't know if it is where you live, but it isn't where I live. <laughs> so there's reasons why the price is what it is. So people shouldn't should look at it from um, all those simple angles of what, you know, what goes into the cost of the groom. There's many things that go into the cost of the groom, plus your knowledge. Having somebody who's knowledgeable to know what to do with this coat and not shake it and not rip through it with a terminator or a coat rake because that will cause him to increase the amount of regrowth of undercoat. So, you know, you're paying for the knowledge to at least the knowledge should be there. And if it's not, if you weren't taught that in grooming school, guys, I wasn't taught how to do shed a dog like this in grooming school. I'll just say that. I learned afterwards because I wanted to produce a perfect groom for every breed that I do. At least as perfect as I can make it. That was always my goal. So the only way to do that is through knowledge. I have so many additional training videos that I've purchased, books. I've set ringside at dog shows to watch how they prepare their dogs, what they're doing to the dogs. Out in the parking lot, they're getting them ready. I've set out there and watched them. There's ways to learn what you need to know. If there's something that you need to know, you need to go learn it. <laughs> right? Right. Okay.
See, he's got to watch me all the time. hot in here, I'll say that. Good job, big guy. Move. Just dry the cheeks a little bit up here. Alright, guys. Alex and I are approaching our second wedding anniversary next week. Well, we, I, we don't have any plans to do anything like dinner or anything. I'd like to do something. I have some special gifts I got for him. But I can't tell you guys because he might be watching too. I'll show you afterwards. <laughs> They're not perverted gifts. Although that's probably much to his disappointment. <laughs> Good job, baby. I know you don't like me flying around your hiney. Okay. I'm gonna move around, yeah. You just stay put, young man. <laughs> Good job. Good job. You can even see when a coat is still damp before you even touch it. It sticks together a little bit. All right, big guy. in here. The, force, the sand dryer does help to pull that moisture out. Good job, buddy. Good job. I am sweating. Hopefully you guys can see okay. Yeah? Okay, good. <laughs> I know you'd like to be closed up, but I can't I can't be working the camera guys. I've got my hands full. Got my hands full. We'll get there someday. We'll get better film action for you guys. One thing at a time. Well, we are definitely making some awesome progress on this channel. 
on the channel. It's starting to produce some money um, consistently, which means I will be upgrading things as well as hiring in some help one or two days a week so I can get the footage I need to get for you guys. And that's going to be a game changer, right? That's definitely going to be a game changer. And you guys are going to see exactly what you need to see. And I won't have to be fumbling around with, why is my camera only showing me portrait mode and not landscape? So frustrating. So very frustrating. Good job, buddy. Somebody else will be worried about those details. I'll just be de shedding dogs. <laughs> Thought that was a stick, but it isn't, thankfully. We'd have to get him, wouldn't we, Tech? We'd get him. Okay, buddy. That feel good, buddy. I think I'm going to lower him a little bit so I can finish drying the top of them a little easier. Hey, buddy. Still have this area back here still pretty damp. And we need to be trimming his feet no later than 15 minutes from now. I'm just looking at the clock and I'm going to be going home. Determining where I'm at with, with our groom here. guys. Oh, I know. We don't like that. We gotta get those those leggies dry back there. Do you notice how there's not a lot of hair blowing out of them? Like there was in the beginning because it's pretty much dry in most places. There's nothing left to blow out. There's nothing left that wants to lose from his coat. That means he did good. Right, buddy? Chet, you did good. You're quite a good boy. Yep, you did good, big guy. You keep moving. How am I supposed to drive your hiney? for me, bud. I can take this off and get in here. It just covers a larger area. Plus, it's a little warm from the heat of the motor. So, it's going to dry this in there. I'm just slowly moving it around in there. Getting it off. Gus, are you sleeping sitting up? 
Good job, big guy. This is a thick area back here. It takes a while to get it thoroughly dry. That's a good boy. I know, honey. It's a lot of work. I'm just feeling with my other hand to see if what's damp. Right here is a nice area that's not dry. It's damp. I also want to sort of fluff away at that a little bit. It feels like it's thick with undercoat. Good job, buddy. I know. Still damp, right against the skin. You need to feel into the skin. Damp back here. Good job, though. I'm going to use my Kenchi Flash Shear Clipper, I'm sorry, to uh, trim his feet and his scissors and thinning shears. Hey, buddy. I know. Bear with me, buddy. You <laughs> don't like that, I know. wet in his armpit here, so get that dry. Good job, buddy.
All right. Good boy. I know you don't like that. If I don't get this dry back here, I'll never be able to properly de-shed it, and it'll want to mat up right away. So I have to get it dry. It's all but dry, but not 100%. So. Stay here. Good boy. I feel good. Yeah, I'm getting a belly rub too. That's okay. I know. <laughs> he doesn't like to have his tail on his behind area dried or messed with. It's all right, buddy. Almost done here. so soft. The uh, coat handler undercoat control conditioner oh, does an amazing job on a double coat. Love it, love it, love it. Alright, big guy. We're turning this puppy off. Oh gosh. I'm sure the dryer is glad for the break too. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna brush through him pretty quickly. And I need to just trim his paw pads.
Good job, buddy. I know you don't like that. It's all right, bud. And line brushing, I'm holding the hair up with one hand and pulling it out with the brush so that I'm sure to get every area. And get that last little bit of undercoat that I need to get out of the coat. Good job, buddy. Get him standing nice and straight so he's comfortable supporting all his weight on his legs. He's probably getting awfully tired of standing. It's okay, bud. Remember, this is like the third or fourth time I'm brushing him <laughs> before the bath, during the bath, after he gets out of the bath on the table. While I'm drying him and brushing him. And now, once again, I'm just trying to release anything else that is hanging in there. Brush with the lay of the coat, the way the coat lays. See, there's still hair flying out of him. I've seen so many groomers not even do a follow-up brush after the blow dry. They just sent them home. I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? All right. But I've never been one to half-ass anything. I don't like that. But I do something, you do it the best you can do it or you just wasted your time. That's the way I feel about it. And I love time. I wish I had more of it because I love doing all kinds of things that I don't have time to do. Good job, buddy. I pull 
cooled down the dryer now it's kind of blowing just cool air on them which probably feels nice about now doesn't it just put you down a little bit just relax honey you're starting to get tired really tired aren't you? even more tired. I've been tired, haven't you? See, this is exhausting for a big guy. I think I got hair stuck to every part of my body right now. I feel like I have an undercoat. I just removed his and now I gained one for myself. <laughs> okay. I'm going to turn that off in just a sec, guys. I'm going to bring him up and I'm going to move you closer. We're going to do feet. And then he's done. Good job, buddy. Fairly decent. I'm using the 15 setting and then we're just going to shave the pads. All this hair. It's okay, bud. I understand. It's hard to stand on three legs. In a V shape in that main pad, because there's a tendon right there, you don't want to nick it. You can nick it with a clipper. Good job, buddy. I know, it's not easy. He's going home in 15 minutes, so... Start your engines. Ready, set, go. Just trimming feet. That's all we really have left to do. My focus is always that this, the undercoat gets worked properly and the skin and coat is where it needs to be before the trimming. And I explain that to the owners. If, if you know, I mean, I, I allow, he came in at 11. I was a little late getting started with him. But I, I asked for him from 11 to 2. So that's three hours. It's a long room. And, and I thought I would be done by now, but he had a lot of a lot of undercoat that I needed to focus on, and we did. And if I say I didn't get to trim and you know round his ears today or whatever, I will explain it to the owner that yeah, I was really focused on that thick undercoat, which she knew that he had a thick undercoat. She pointed it right out to me when she came in. When he came in, she said, "I don't know why his coat's so thick right now, but it is." So she knows. She knows that we had to work the coat, and that's the first thing that I want to make sure that I get done, and there's three hours. Even if I didn't trim his feet today, I would have shaved his pads and, and said, you're good to go. I shave his pads so they can get good traction when they're walking, especially an older dog. But she would have been fine with that because I still put in the same amount of work. I just, his undercoat was more work, so I'm going to take the cotton ball out. Remember any cotton balls in his ears? He's still got some yucky stuff down in there, bud. So we're going to take those out. Now I know that I did that. You don't have to forget. So I'm going to get my Kenchi Flash and a straight shear. How's it looking for you guys? Not the best. Could be better. All right. Straight shear, I'm just going to kind of create that little angle right there. I'm going to be picking up his foot. Good job, buddy. I'm going to use my Kenchi shear, put my hand on the top of his foot so he doesn't pick his foot up. I'm just 
I'm going to tidy that up a little bit. This is my blender shear from Kenchi, the Kenchi Lightning Shear that I love so much. And I do. And I do. All right. Good. It's okay, bud. Just going to tidy this up a little bit underneath. Calm everything on up from the between his little toes and just shape it in. Okay, buddy, I know you're tired. I'm so glad to get you off this table today because I think you're done. You've had enough. I get it. I get it. Can you guys see that? I'm just shaping. Shaping that up. Looks good. That's a good foot. That's a good foot. All right. Same here. Look how we can just get a comb right through him. This is what needs to happen. I need to be able to get a comb through him like this. We did right. We did right by him today. Let's put that foot over here, honey. Stand on it. Now I'm just going to shape up that area like that with his foot standing. And then I'm going to pick his foot up and take care of the rest. Like this. Okay, you guys will get a good dose of trim and feet when you see the new Funland video too. Because that's on a much larger scale and it's up close and personal. It's easy for you guys to see. I'm very excited to get that video done. I wish I could just snap my fingers, but I can't. That's not how stuff works. Good job, baby. I know. I'm, I'm going to get you down in just a second, okay? It's okay, bud. Take a look at both feet and trying to Make them look the same. It's okay, bud. Big guy. Boy, I bet you're going to sleep the whole way home, too, in the car, aren't you? After you stick your head out the window and get a little bit of fresh air, then you're going to curl up and go to sleep in the back seat. I just know it. I know, buddy. It's okay. Always use your comb, guys, to see how your work is. See if it's even, if you need to fluff anything up and scissor down. Whatever you gotta do, check your work with your comb. Last foot. He says, yay, hallelujah, last foot. I know, buddy. I'm listening to you pant, and I don't like it. I know you need a break.
panting for a dog means a lot of different things. It can mean they're hot, it can mean they're stressed, it can mean they're nervous, it can mean they're in pain, it can mean that they're sick and tired. <laughs> and which one do you think the panting means right now for Tex? Sick and tired of it. Get me done, get me off the table, my patience level, in the standing in the same spot for three hours. I'm done with that. He's all finished. I'm going to run a comb through him quickly one more time before I get him off the table. But that's it. He's done. Whew. And so am I. Thank goodness he's my last dog. I'm beat. I really am. But he looks, he looks awesome. What do you guys think? Boy, what a 150 minutes, wow. I can't even get the comments to come up. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right, let me back this off. There he is. <laughs> this is Tex, guys. And uh, I wanna thank you for sticking around for 156 minutes, <laughs> right? Imagine how he feels. <laughs> I know, he's gonna, I'm getting him off the table and he's gonna feel amazing. And I wanna tell you guys that I appreciate you sticking around and learning what it takes to uh, get the coat in this condition. And it can be done and it can be done this, this simply. Obviously you guys know that. And uh, you can do it too. So uh, I will see you all real soon and look for that new Funland video that's coming up. You're going to love it and I'm so excited for it to, to air. I might do a premiere with that one so I can talk to you guys in the chat because it's going to be, oh geez, I think it's going to be about at least 50 minutes close to an hour if not an hour. Depends on how much I edit off of it. I've been editing it down a little bit. I'm trying to trim some of the fat of the video, but I think I might do a premiere. So if I do, that'll be set for a 5.30 time, either tomorrow or the next day, I would say would probably be doable if I can get it done. I think it's probably looking more like Friday, if I'm correct. Uh, there's a couple cool things coming up on the channel, guys. I'm going to be doing my first collaboration video with a dog trainer. Um, we're talking about that this Friday. We're going to be talking, him and I are talking about it. He has a YouTube channel, Saro, S-A-R-O, Dog Training. If you want to go look that up, him and I are going to do a collaboration, and I cannot wait. It'll be a collaboration live stream, most likely, um, because his tactics for training and my tactics for grooming are perfect, perfectly paired to help people with grooming their dogs, right? Because sometimes we have behavioral issues that we're struggling with when we're trying to work with our dogs as far as grooming goes. So I think this is going to be a pretty fantastic live stream on him and I figure out what we're going to do, what we're going to focus on, and when we're going to do it. But you guys will be the first to know. <laughs> so don't worry. All right. So over and out. Big virtual hug. I love you guys. Thanks for sticking it out and, and watching this whole groom. Two hours worth of grooming. All right. I love you guys. Take care. Oh, I can't.